Hi, you're listening to Kate Palmer from sparkletart.com. This post is part confession. I'm a messy crafter. I've recently been doing a series on my blog about cleaning up the craft room and organizing and storage, mostly for me, but I've invited a few people to join in and you can do that until the end of April 2012. I'm going through my craft room. I'm really looking at what it is that's there, what's working for me, what's not. I need to acknowledge when it comes to crafting, I'm lazy. I don't like putting things away while I'm in the middle of working on something. I tend to end up with piles of stuff. If I've got to open a folder to put something away, it's likely to end up in a pile on the floor. I filled my room, well, my space. I haven't really got a room. You can see it here. And I don't really have anywhere else to go. I can't move rooms. I can't get any more space than I already have. So I just need to use it better. So this is my video confession. I thought it might be helpful for me. And I thought you might be interested in having a peek in the stuff that I have collected over the last month that has not been put away. I'm trying to identify here what it is that's stopping me from putting these things away and what I can do to fix that so that I can then have a more neat and organized craft room. So I've been finding it quite interesting actually. Um, I've been going a bit slow for the first week on my blog. I've really been having a look at what I've got and where it is and how I'm working on it. I'd love for you to join me if you've got time. So go on over to my blog which is sparkletart.com and you can join up for the Sparkle Tarts Craft Cleanse. Just look for the little icon on the left hand side of the page. You can't miss it. So what do I have? I have an enormous pile that has been sitting on my floor gathering for over a month. So what's here? Okay, so I have some little Prima flowers that I got on special. Why are these not put away? That would be because I'm storing my flowers in little storage bins and they're currently full. I now have six flower storage bins, um, <clears throat> two for Prima, uh, two for Wild Orchid Crafts, one for miscellaneous flowers that I don't remember where they came from. And I now have a bucket, not just a tin or a bin or a little storage thing. I now have a bucket, which is the second pile sitting on my floor of I Am Roses. I've got little paper off carts, the resist paper I couldn't stand to throw away, but I have no idea what I'm going to do with something that small. Why are my paper off cuts not put away? Well, that one's easy. My paper off cuts bin is also full. It's currently one drawer on a little A4 drawer unit, and um, it's full to the point of overflowing, even though I've just cleaned it out last month. I have my peerless watercolour paint. Um, and it's just sort of like a little palette that I can take with me whenever I go away. Thank you to Jane for that wonderful idea. And it's supposed to live in my journal, which is buried somewhere further down here, but it keeps falling out. That's why that's not put away. Okay, so I might have some new flowers as well. More Prima, perhaps. Um, how exactly can you resist when the new ones look like this? They're fabric, they're kind of flat, so you can use them in almost any project. I couldn't resist. And what's even worse is these are white. So I can spray them with my Lindy Stamp Gang sprays and make them any colour I like. And of course, because the little beads in the centre are plastic, they'll resist the colour, so they'll still stay that beautiful, pale, pastely, sequiny look. I had a little problem with those. So just in case you need them yourself, this one is part of the Donna Downey set from Prima. And I believe this particular one is called Poppies and Peonies. And this one is called Tasha Frost. And again, it's from Prima. Again, more scrap paper. And here's my journal. <laughs> yeah. Why is this not put away? because I've now got that many journals on the go for all different sorts of things, some wet, some dry, some lettering, that they don't all fit in my shelf. So I really need to sort these out. Look, I've got some ribbon. Again, my ribbon drawers are full. I need to cull. <laughs> I hope someone else does this and not just me. When you've been spraying nice things um, on some scrap paper and it makes an awesome pattern, sometimes I keep these. I put them in my journal. They're kind of fun. I've got a couple of new La La Land stamps. Why have I not put these away? What do you know? I bought myself another Spellbinder die. 
This was on my list though. Now I didn't buy it during my craft cleanse. This pile is significantly older than that, but um, man, I haven't even unpacked this one. Probably because my dye storage is currently being upgraded. I'm almost done, so I'll show you when I'm finished. Little plastic bags, because I might need them for something. Who knows what? Oh look, scrap paper. Oh, okay, this one's not so bad. I've actually been spraying something on this one, so I've got leaves for a project sprayed with my gorgeous Lindy's Stamp Gang sprays. Obviously, I need somewhere to put half-finished projects. Well, more scrap paper, more scrap paper, more of that gorgeous resist card. Can't part with any of that for some reason. And this is something I've been playing with, with the resist. This is the Moon Shadows from Lindy's Stamp Gang. Again, it's looking like I need a projects in progress box folder something. Ah, uh, now this is the moon shadow mists I was playing with to match that gorgeous resist die cut. Again, more stuff that I have been playing with with my sprays. I can't throw out any of these because they're so gorgeous. I know I'll use them at some point. And apparently I have some crafters workshop dies hiding in my pile. Um, these are some of the new ones I've bought. So I've got mini bricks and aspen trees. Currently they're living in a drawer and the drawer is full. So I need a better way to store them. I think this has given me a really good idea of the places I desperately need to start. I'm sensing it's a box or something for my scrap card. A box for projects in progress. Maybe I need to put away some of my flowers. Now... These are some of the dilutions. I can't show you yet, but I'm working on something special. Aren't the colours gorgeous? Or in progress. Again, this is the My Mojito Green. Yum. And this is more Lindy's. Now, this is a second generation, so that means I've used the scrappy colours that I had left over on something else and smooshed this over the top. Gives a really nice sort of um, subtle effect to the whole thing. More scraps. More scraps. Wow, I'm sensing some scraps. Oh, I just found my new peerless watercolors. Now these came from Jane and this is the Jane set and it's the Vintage Radiant Reds. I think I need to find a home for these with the rest of my watercolor palette perhaps. And I've been making myself an Adirondack acrylic paint dabber color chart and the color chart is just the one I printed from Ranger. More scrap paper. Oh this pile's enormous. Okay so I've got some amazing Lindy's projects that I'm kind of half working on some new ideas for. I'm not going to tell you about them at the moment but look at that. Look at that. Yum. Mm, okay so that's all coming up. Oh same kind of idea but in different colors trying to get something that looks kind of organic-y. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay. More Lindy's. Oh, I think I have a problem. Oh, okay. Look, some more Ranger. More Lindy's. Yet more Lindy's. Obviously, I have a little issue. Lindy's problem. Uh, this one is more of the alcohol inks from Ranger. I'm playing with my Tim stuff. More Lindy's. Uh, more Lindy's. Isn't that yummy? Oh, look! More Crafters Workshop stencils. Ever since Julie Faith and Bowser re released some of these new ones, I seem to have needed all of them. They're just so interesting and so different, and they let me do so many things. This is the Lotus Blossom and the Stackable Stars and the writing, which I didn't think I'd want, but it turns out I did. Now, what else have I got here? Oh, look. Okay, little bird die cut. Now, I've been buying some of the... Oh, gee, wow, look, that's a stack. I've been buying some of the dilution stamps. I've got a gorgeous swirly die cut from um, Cherry Lynn Designs. And that's what I was using to cut that gorgeous green leafy swirl before. Again, I need to find a home in my die cut folder for that. More of that resist card. Oh, look, more dies. More stamps, a couple more of my favourite things dies. The little flags were just too cute to resist. 
I just have my ATC published in as car Australian card making, stamping and paper craft. So they sent me a thank you letter and a magazine and my trading card back. That needs to go into my trading card folder. A few more stamps. So this one is from Stamping Bella and this one is from Crafty Individuals. Again, I've just plopped them between some plastic and haven't put them away. I do have space for those though. <clears throat> I'm sensing I have a Prima problem. So I've got some of these uh, decorative wood embellishments. I just couldn't go past the little clock. So I was seriously looking at the little uh, vintage wooden, so they've got like little luggage tags and things as well. But I started with the clocks, couldn't seem to go past those. Now I've also been playing with painting with my magicals. And this is something I've been working on. Again, it's not finished. I need a finishing projects in progress folder more resist that I couldn't throw away right some word sheets from collections which are fantastic to cut out and you can put them in any color or edge them using these on projects and I just have them sitting there and a few more paper scraps some just right damps and they go with one of the new dies I just bought from spellbinders and these are fleur-de-lis labels that's labels 20. Um, they're just too cute. Too cute. And lucky last, the last thing on the bottom of my pile, apart from a few pieces of paper, is my new Compendium of Curiosities from Tim Holtz, Volume 2. Now, and of course, this was just so interesting. I just I felt that I needed to have it. As much as I love watching Tim's videos online, sometimes having it in front of me while I'm working is less distracting than watching the video. So that's what's in that pile. This was a really interesting exercise for me and it helped me identify the areas that I really need to start with to get my craft room a bit tidier. And I think it also might be an interesting exercise for any of you who like to make piles like I do. So for me, number one is I need a box for projects in progress. Number two, I'm going to need somewhere to put my, um, I suppose, background pieces of art that I've sprayed but haven't got a use for yet. And number three is uh, I need to put away my dies and my stamps and my stencils, just all those little things. I already have a home that I haven't put away. And lucky last is I really do think I need a box for some scraps and offcuts or I need to throw them out, one of those two things. So going through that pile was actually quite an interesting exercise for me. Um, it's allowed me to identify a few areas in my craft room that just by, you know, having somewhere I can put these things would help reduce that pile that's currently sitting on the floor. So I wonder what it's like in your room. Do you have little piles of things sitting on your floor? And are there a few easy things that you could identify that would help stop that being a pile? So give you a place to put those things. So, um, I hope you've enjoyed having a look through <laughs> the pile of stuff on my floor and um, I'll come and show you my new craft room when I'm finished reorganizing everything. Bye. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.